Victor, today we're going to talk about the attributes of being a successful entrepreneur in the digital age. You know, it took me a long time to learn how to spell that word. Attribute? <laughs> no, entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, okay. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you know what the hardest... It's like anonymous, you know. Yeah, right. You know, you know what the worst part of being an entrepreneur is? The hardest part is getting out of bed in the morning, you know, because you've got to be self-winding to be an entrepreneur. I remember... Um, John Williams was a friend of mine, he's not passed away, bless his soul. Yeah. He had this saying that goes, and well, I'm sure it wasn't his, he was part of Vistage, yeah. but it said, you know, wisdom comes from, from, from experience. Right. And experience comes from failure. Right. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And entrepreneurship is somewhat that way. Uh, this, I, I wanted to write this article because we see a lot of entrepreneurs. I mean, sure. we, we do a lot of startups and stuff like that. And one of the things that I've noticed is, they either are really sharp from the perspective that they know how to get out of their own way. Right. Or they're the exact opposite. They fall all over themselves by getting in their way as many ways and many oh, yeah. times as they can. Well, you know, you know what the hardest thing to teach entrepreneurs is? You can't do everything yourself. Right. You can't do That's everything. the biggest problem. A lot of them don't understand that D word, you know, yeah. and, they, and they want to micromanage everything. And, and that's the, the best way to, to you know, Quickest way to disaster I could think right. of. The quickest way to derail a money train, as right. you often say. <laughs> and again, so I wanted to talk about this because for many entrepreneurs, really successful entrepreneurs, a lot of people think that they just had it. Right. You know, you think of Steve Jobs. Yeah. Right? He just had it. Well, actually, he had some of the things. Right. Really successful entrepreneurs usually evolve. Right. They're not usually just come out of the box well, and they were born like Jesus and, and they the, did it. And the guys that are the most successful realize they can't do it all alone. Right. So and if you, you look at look team. at Steve, he couldn't right. have done it without Waz. I mean, well, even even, even Waz and Jobs. I mean, the two of them, if they had not built an organization, they right. they never would have gotten out of the garage. If they wouldn't have had Bill and all the right. other guys. They would have had nothing. Right. Okay. And sometimes serendipity touches you in the right time and place, you know, and you right. happen to be doing the right thing, and, and you have the right people. Of, speaking about touching somebody in the right time, we definitely want to reach out and touch our sponsor and tell right. people about our, our, our sponsor, because basically uh, they've been with us all year. Yeah. Well, actually, this is their second year with yeah. us, so I uh, want to thank Life and Balance for being our, our sponsor, not only because they're a great sponsor, they're a great company. If you're looking to get the best chiropractic care in the Northeast Florida region, you want to check them out. I mean, people I know drive to, to see them, right. you know, almost 100 miles, some people, because once they figure out how attentive they are and how detailed they are to look to find what your problem is, because their job is to find the root of your problem. They don't want you coming back for treatment after treatment. Mm -hmm. after. They want to solve whatever the heck your yeah. problem is so that you have a more fulfilling life. That's their mission, mm -hmm. and they do that extremely well. I mean, I can tell you, I started with them as a chiropractic patient. Mm -hmm. They were phenomenal. I mean, I yeah. never, I always left feeling better. Well, and what's great about them, too, is, again, they're not just there to, to cure what ails you. They're there to make you healthy. Right. And that's, that's something you don't find too much in, in today's, you know, medical association. Right. Most of these medical guys out there want to keep you coming back so they right. can keep, you know, bringing the ticket yeah. up. And, and what's even better is now they also have a YouTube show and a blog talk right. radio show. And, and, again, they're also a Nutramos uh, center. So they were the premier, the first right. Nutramo Center in Jacksonville. And I can tell you, as my own testimony, I lost 34 pounds. I'm coming up on six months. haven't gained a single pound back. I still can go out and eat pizzas and stuff like that. And I don't gain the weight. I mean, it's really, really cool. I'm 61 years old. And it's like to have the metabolism of like of a 35-year-old right. person. Yeah. And I, I know it's just not me. I have other friends who've gone through the program, too, that I've seen. It. It's, it's just really cool. So... Definitely check them out. Go to vibrantlifehealthcenter.com. Check out the show on Thursdays. There's uh, Life in Balance. You'll really, you'll thank us for doing that. That's right. Um, today's show is all about entrepreneurs and all that kind of stuff. And I, I want to make sure that the listeners can call in. It uh, Our number is 213-943-3808. So if you're listening out there, you can call in. Give us a relevant question and, you know, we'll let you plug your company and that kind of stuff. So if you're an entrepreneur, this That's is right. your chance for being an <laughs> entrepreneur out there. Um, of course, if you go to workintowebtowin.com, you'll find all kinds of links to, to yeah. get a hold of us and that kind of yeah. stuff. Well, you know, you know, the thing is a lot of people, uh, and being an entrepreneur really is a, is a very frightening concept for a lot of people, right. you know. A lot um, of people can't do it. I, I got to work for somebody. I don't want to make these hard decisions and all that other kind of well, stuff. Well, it, it, there's risk involved. Right. You know, it's not like going to a job yeah, where you're going to get paid, you know, whether, whether you do that job. And, of course, you get fired a job. But, I mean, right. for the most part, those people like to have that 
security, well, what they consider security of a right. job, which we know is, not, is a right. fallacy. The security too. doesn't exist anymore. Right. I mean, we live in a, in a world where it's rapidly changing. Right. And one of the things, we'll talk about some of these these things that are really important, not only for entrepreneurs, but actually for people with jobs. Right. If you don't have a lot of these skills, you won't have a job. Well, and in fact, a lot of people work their way into entrepreneurship because of, of either being dissatisfied with the job or they just want to make some extra right. money, so they start a sideline business, and some some of them, you know, go down in flames, but others will get to yeah. the point where they can actually quit their day job just yeah. to work their business. Yeah. I mean, I wrote this article because, again, I see lots of entrepreneurs, and I thought about it, you know, and I thought my own career and where I've done and where I've gone and all the yeah. things I've done, and again, I'm sort of in a a self-improvement junkie for a really long time. Yeah. I mean, I remember I was in college, I had really a lot of trouble with spelling and math. I had to take the classes sometimes twice right. you know, to, to get through them. And I, I graduated with, you know, uh, like in the top 2% of my class mm -hmm. with, you know, an A average and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, but I really had to work hard. And even today, my work ethic is one of the things that really has helped me, you know, grow. Well, that's the whole point, though, especially being an entrepreneur. Number one, you have to be willing to work. Number two, you have to be willing to do anything that needs to be done. Right. There is no, that's not my job right. as You've got to do whatever it takes. Yeah. The we it type of, you know, mentality is really And especially when you start up, you've got to wear a lot of hats. Yeah. And it's as simple as that, because in the beginning, you don't have enough right. money to really outsource a lot of it, so you got to do it yourself. Right, and you're the, you're the guy who cleans the toilet and, you know, scrubs the floors. Whatever it takes. And, but now, the nice thing is that being said, though, right. you know, today, because of the way with the Internet and things like that, uh, there are a lot of ways that you can actually build up a force without having to have a lot of overhead like we do. You know, we don't have a lot of people here sitting around waiting for 5 o'clock to come around. You know, we, you can use a lot of independent contractors. You can you can tie into, like, you know. If There's you also a lot of automated tools that right. can do things for you. I mean, the Internet is is a whole new era for the world. Right. I mean, there's just so many things at, at your fingertips. For example, if you're a bad speller like me, it's not a problem. I can ask Google and it'll spell anything that I want to, I mean, immediately. Right. You know, if I need grammar help, there's grammar online, they can fix all that kind of stuff. If I want to find some information on something, it's at my fingertips or even I can just ask for it. I mean, right. literally, I can literally talk to the computer and say, get this for me, you know, bring the stuff up in spades. So, when I, when I started writing this, I was thinking about, you know, are all these attributes just sort of randomly there, or are they sort of part of a hierarchy? Right. And I thought about Maslow's, you know, hierarchy. Most people, I mean, if you're into psychology, you'll know who Maslow was. He had this, like, uh, hierarchy of, you know, how a person progresses from just being able to survive mm -hmm. to being self-enlightened, right. literally, mm -hmm. okay? And... His idea was you had to go through these different stages to get to self enlightenment. And, you know, we're bored, self enlightened, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And my idea is the same thing with entrepreneurs. So I broke down the attributes into three main categories, and I call these categories uh, the order, the sphere of com uh, competency. So the mm -hmm. three spheres of competency, okay. and they're sort of built on top of each other, sort right. of like Maslow's pyramid. Right. Okay. So the first order I talked about was, you know. How do you organize things? The order, I call that order. Right. And organizational skills are extremely important because if you're really all over the place, it's hard to progress. Well, and also, if, <laughs> you know, if you're a one-man band with yeah. entrepreneurship yeah. and you're not organized, right. you're, you're, you're going down. Right. You, you can't really... You can't function. You can't go in a direction. No. Even if you have the greatest vision in right. the world, you can't go in a, in a specific direction yeah. because you're ADHD. ADHD. Right. And I can tell you, since I'm ADHD, been actually diagnosed, used to take the drugs for when I was a kid, <laughs> I can tell you that if, if you don't get organized, right. and you can become organized if you're ADHD, because <laughs> a lot of entrepreneurs actually are ADHD, oh, sure. but once you get organized, it really helps you. So here's some of the attributes that really are important to organization. One of them is you have to be proactive. Mm -hmm. If you're not proactive, you let things happen to you. Yeah, then you're reactive. And, and then you're reactive, and then you're lost. Well, because then all you're doing is putting out fires. Right. So you got to be able to be proactive. And if you're proactive, you also have to be focused. Now, a lot of these that we're going to be talking about sort of go hand in hand. You can't right. really have one without yeah. the other. For, for well, yeah, but speaking of focus, I mean, one of the things that I use to stay focused is I use, like, my Google Calendar. So my whole yeah. day is planned out. I've got little blocks of time, and I know what i got to do in those little blocks so that it's not chaos when I come into the office every day. And it, you know, and, and sometimes I'm planning two, three, four months out. Right. 
And the same way, uh, along with the calendar, a yeah. task, a task list. Mm -hmm. So in within a single day, you can have these tasks within your calendar. Right. I mean, before we had all the internet, and all that stuff. I used to have. I used to buy pads that said things to do, and they mm -hmm. were things to do pads. And I would buy them by like, like fifty of them. Right. And I would just use them every day when I filled one out, and then oh, yeah. whatever I scratched out at the end of the day, I transfer them yeah. manually. Yeah. To the new well, pad. Before before they had the Google Calendar, I used to use the day planners. Right. You know, there was a book. Right. There was the same same vehicle, just not electronic. And What's again, nice about the electronic is you know, you can find it if you if right. you're not sitting in front of your computer, you can bring it up on your smartphone, right. so it's portable. Right. I mean, today it's so much easier. Yeah. It really is. Again, old school paper pencil. Right. You know. Hey, I remember, how, I remember how much we used to just spend in our business on telephones. Yeah. You know, just just the cost of making phone calls around the country. Well, today it's I've spent forty five bucks a month. Yeah, and the, for my yeah, plan, and unlimited. You, and you can text people, and yeah. you can send them emails on your phone. You can look up everything right. on the internet on your phone. So you got a lot more tools right. than you did. There's a lot more then. tools today, and along with those, again, is different things that you had to do to be organized. So one of them was self discipline. Now, right. when I say self discipline, that means nobody has to discipline you to do it. Right. Well, like you I said, get, the hardest part of being an entrepreneur is getting out of bed. Right. You get up in the morning, and you <laughs> say, okay. I got to go do this. Right. Nobody has to tell you you got to go do it. Yeah. And one of the things, one of the reasons that Carl and I, I believe that we've stayed together for five years, is because if something gets has to be done, I don't have to say Carl do this or Carl doesn't have to come to me and say do that. It just gets done. Yeah. Even if somebody's sick or late or whatever, and we know that it has to be done, that day gets done. done. Mm -hmm. All right. So self discipline is extremely important. Self motivation. Right. You you that you can't wait to have somebody come up and motivate you and dangle a carrot in your front, right. you know, or give you yeah. a present or whatever. Yeah. Being an entrepreneur, you, you got to be self winding for sure. You, you got to be self winding, and you got to be driven to go after whatever you're focused on. Yeah. So you have to really care about that. So that also has to do with some one of the later ones when we talk about passion and so on. But you really have to be driven. You have to want that extremely bad, whatever it is. Yeah, because if you don't have desire, you're not going right. anywhere. You ain't gonna go anywhere. Because that's the thing, you know, when when you when you're an entrepreneur, you're, you're kind of like you, know, you have to carry your own water. Right. And, and if you just don't feel like doing it, guess what? <laughs> Nothing happens. Nothing's gonna there's nobody happen. hitting you with a cattle prod like when you're at work. You right. know, they're looking at you like, what the hell are you doing sitting there right. you know, watching videos? Yeah. I mean, unless you have some kind of self shocking mechanism right. or something like that, put in place. And and the last the last item that I put under this, and again, some people would put this in a different area, would be vision. Mm -hmm. The more you fully understand what it is you're trying to accomplish, right. the greater the chance of you accomplishing it. I mean, the first chair that was ever made, somebody had to see that chair in their mind's eye. Right. You know, to be actually be able to make a chair. I mean, a nice looking chair. I don't mean a rock that they sat on right. or, or a lot <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they, they had to really see it. And if you think about software programs or computers, they had to be able to visualize a lot of these things in their minds to be able to make them happen. Yeah. And I don't mean just the shape. They had to think of a computer, how many multitudes of different pieces that are in there right. that would have to be thought of to make that thing happen. Well, and I mean, that's something that's kind of pretty much hardwired into us because if you go back, I mean, even cavemen, they would do cave drawings and right. things like that, right? Yeah, so vision. This is how we hunt, Og. Right. Right. And you see the pictures of the little ponies and they're they yeah. the arrows and all that kind of stuff. So vision is very, very important. That was their business plan. Right. right. <laughs> if they didn't catch, you know. Well, and you know, especially when the megaphone around. You know, it took a little bit of planning to bring down a mastodon. You know what I mean? Right. And it's, you had to make sure that, you know, one of those cyber tooths were, you yeah. know, hunting you while you were hunting right. yourself. You know, so vision really big deal. And again, that's, in my opinion, if you didn't have these first ones, right. it's really hard to get some of the second ones. So where we're talking about our organizational skills or what I call yeah. order. The second one is skills in general. Yeah, because once you know where you want to go, now the question is, how do I get from right, here to there? Right, So how do you get all these skills? Well, one of the things you have to be willing to do is you have to be willing to learn. Yeah. I talk to a lot of people, and they say things like, I'm not going to do that. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, you're not going to do that? Well, guess what? You ain't going to get from A to right. B. Right, exactly. <laughs> because if you don't learn this stuff, That's right. you're going to be out of a job in five years yeah. or whatever it is. I hear people all the time say, you know, I want to get a new job, but I, I don't I don't want to have to learn all that stuff. It's going to take me a year. <laughs> so where are you going to be in a year? Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to be Same in place. a food line or what? Yeah. 
Well, and, and, and you know, we've had a couple of partners we've tried to bring into the business, but same thing. They just didn't get that entrepreneurial. I don't do that. You can't right. say that as right. an entrepreneur. Right. If you're running an entrepreneurial business, there is no I can't do. It's just, it's got to get done. Right. And, and in many cases, you have to choose, pick and choose what, you, right. what you're going to have to tackle. So, for example, maybe next year, we want to set up a new TV thing where we can do, like, the video swapping on the fly with an engineer. So, well, we have to learn how to do that. Right. And we know that we would have to probably spend 50 hours of time right. doing that. Right now, we want to go back to live streaming. It took me about two months to figure out how to do live streaming before. Yeah. And then Google changed the whole game. So right. now i got to relearn how to do the yeah. live streaming. Maybe we want to do it on Facebook now. i got to learn how to use it on Facebook. Well, I remember when I first tried to learn how to do uh, post-production on Avid, which was a really sophisticated program. I had to buy... You know, DVDs, I mean, hours and hours and hours of DVD with me taking notes right. and trying things and learning things before I can really use the, the package. Same way, properly. if you want to be able to build really good web pages, yeah. you might be able to rely on some of these WYSIWYG programs that'll make most of it yeah. for you, but you're not making web pages. The right. program is making the web pages. If you right. want to be able to go in there and edit the code right. and make it do stuff to, that needs to really be done, you got to learn how to feed that machine. You've got to know how to technically write yeah. CSS and HTML code. Okay, or if you're a .NET person, .NET stuff. Right. You know, so on top of willingness to learn, you have to actually learn the specific technical skills, whatever right. it is. And that's whatever industry you're in. Okay, it doesn't matter. Whatever that is, you decided you're going to build widgets. Sure. You better know everything about there is a, to building widgets. If, if it takes engineering skills, engineering skills you itself. Do it, right. You also got to have a willingness to network. Right. Because today that's the way business is done. You know, when, when you and I came up, used to be a lot of cold calling and door knocking. Right. It's not so much anymore. Well, not only that, if you're an entrepreneur, you it's the most it. cost-effective right. way right. to grow your business yeah. because you don't have the money to do massive advertising right. and all this other kind of stuff. You really got to do some guerrilla marketing and networking. Stuff, right. Networking is grassroots marketing. I mean, you got to be able to get in there and do that. Mm -hmm. Along with that, you have to have communication skills. Right. So you got to be able to give your 60-second presentation and your five-minute presentation, your 15-minute presentation. But you got to be able to talk to people. You got to be able to communicate. Not only talk, but you got to be able to listen and understand sure. and empathize and a whole bunch well, of other stuff. Plus, look at all the digital tools you've got for communication today. You know, like I tell people, is the biggest between having the F for Facebook, the T for Twitter, and the G for Google Plus on your page and feeding it and growing an audience is listening to what you have to say. You got you got all these social nets and you got to learn how to use them. Right. Okay. But you also got things like go to webinar and, and go to meeting yeah. and hangouts and yeah. and Word and Excel yeah. and all you know. There's lots of communications tools that you need to have to right. learn how to use. Some of them are wonderful. For example, if you write, writing is part of a communication skill. Mm -hmm. Grammarly, Ginger, Word has a pretty. The newest version of Word actually has some pretty good grammar stuff built right. into it that, that I really like. But again, you have to master these programs. And if you got Word 2003 and you say, well, I don't want to learn how to Word 2016, right. it was tough. If you want to be able to move forward because the 2003 one is junk compared to the new one, oh, yeah. but, and not only that, it's not supported anymore. And, and that's the only thing you can count on online is change. So you have to right. keep up with the changes or you'll just get lost. And that's, that's, we see a lot, that's why a lot of people come to us. We get a lot of clients because, frankly, they're lost. The Internet has just lost them. They have right. no idea how it works anymore. They can't keep up with all the different right. changes. And, uh, and I can tell you, I mean, I do most of the social media stuff, and that's like change of the day. Right. It's almost like you go to a restaurant, and what soup do you have? Well, it's what, what social media do you got today? Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is. And again, if you have the right attitude, that you understand that this is what your mission is, yeah. this is what you're supposed to be doing, right. it's not a problem. And those kinds of attitudes and reaching a certain level of skill leads to what I call self-mastery. Right. So once you g gain that confidence, that's what self-mastery is, mm -hmm. you've gained that confidence right. that this is a mission that you can actually accomplish, yep. you go to a whole new level. Now, two things can happen to you at this level. When you gain that self-confidence, you can become cocky. Right. You can become greedy. Right. You can take in all the, the bad stuff of the force. Right, or, or <laughs> not be willing to share with the other right. children. Right, right. You know, or you could become a person who understands that, you know, you have a, a, a condom of, of success. Right. And you want to be able to share that. Right. And that sharing takes you to a whole new level. Yeah. Well, in fact, you were talking about networking. And what most people think of when they go into networking is, you know, gimme, 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 right. gimme. It's the other way around. You know, if you really want to succeed at networking, what you need to do is find ways of giving Others. other people. Right. And again, 
business. That's just sort of the dichotomy that happens. Mm-hmm. A lot of people go astray that they think that they really need to sell, sell, sure. sell, 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 and they don't understand the law of reciprocity. Right. The law of reciprocity is what takes you to this third level, That's self-actualization, yep. whatever you want to call yep. it. Okay, and there are certain things that fall underneath that. So this willingness to share is a big deal, mm-hmm. but also having empathy for others. Sure. If you're not empathetic and, and trying to understand their their right. point of view and their perspective, it's hard to share well, the, because you're not willing to listen. Right, and, and especially about the, the uh, networking part. I mean, there's no way you can network unless you understand the other guy's right. position. So if you're not willing to listen right. really well and empathize and, and then have some communication skills that sort of yep. in. So in other words, you've got to be able to feed the stuff back so they understand that you understood yep. them and, and all those kinds of things. And here's where the passion comes in. Right. If you are working in the industry that you've decided is really the best thing for you, mm-hmm. you should have passion. Well, if you don't, you're not going to survive. Right. And again, if, you're not, pa- grind, you if you're not passionate about it, you're probably in the wrong industry. Right. You really need to go back and figure out what that first item was. Right. Am I in the right industry or am I in the wrong well, industry? And, you know, most people, they, they, you know, they look at these people that are ultra successful as entrepreneurs, but they don't realize, you know, you have to, it takes, it, there's a process to get from startup right. to stardom. And if you don't, if you're not willing to get in the trenches and roll up your sleeves and roll with the punches, that's what most of it is in entrepreneurship. It isn't like, you know, you don't have a growth curve like this. It's like this. It's a roller coaster ride. And you got to be willing to have just as much passion when you're going straight downhill. In fact, you have to have more passion when you go. You're not going to be able to pull out. You'll go right into the ground. Well, think think about. And all businesses go through that, including, by the way, Apple. Right. I was going to say, I like to think about Steve Jobs, okay? He was a very passionate person. Wasn't always empathetic. Right. Okay. Some people called him an a hole. Because he was sort of rough around the edges right. when it came to like what he wanted. Right. He wasn't going to bend. Right. Okay. But he was generous. Right. He was a guy who, who would listen to his people. Yeah. But he also knew what his vision was. Right. And he stuck to that very hard. Yeah. And if and you sometimes were, he took a couple of hits because right, of it. Right. Yeah, again, I mean, he got canned. Right. From a couple of companies. Right. I mean, including, including Apple. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, again, that kind of thing. I never thought of him to be a humble person, no. but then again, I didn't know him, so right. I don't know. But generally, these people who are really ultra successful are humble to some extent. Right. Okay? I mean, that doesn't mean they're not have some pride of what they've done and accomplished, but they generally know that they wouldn't have been able to do it by themselves. Right. They had other people that were dragging them in there, too. Uh, and generous, what I mean by generous, if, if they got big piles of money, they share their money. Right. They, they, they have no doubt... Not only their money, but their success. You know, yeah. they made a lot of other businesses successful because they work with them. Apple actually did something you know? that I always thought was pretty cool when they came out with their products and stuff like that. They didn't try and come out with every damn accessory on the planet. Right. They let other people come out yeah. with accessories, and when they, somebody else had a cool accessory, yeah. they didn't come out with their own cool right. accessory that was exact to exactly. kill that person. Right. They didn't do that. Right. Whereas a lot of other companies do that have all the time. Yeah. Okay. So Samsung comes out with a cool gizmo, I mean, with a, with a phone, and somebody else comes with a thing that goes for it. Next thing you see is Samsung making their own right. version of that. Uh, so, and again, I'm not picking on Samsung. I'm just making up a... Yeah, a lot of big companies But, but those, those right. types of things happen. Microsoft did that a number of times, right. too. Apple really yeah. never did that. They really pretty much let it become an ecosystem. Right. You know, and, and if you understand anything about ecology, there's a thing called symbiosis. And those two things, they work together. Yep. They can't live without each other. Yep. They won't be as successful yep. without each other. And that's one of the things that we're talking about when, when we're doing here. So the last two items that I wanted to bring up, uh, when we said humble, ethical. The reality is, in the world we live in today, yep. if you're unethical, yep. the emperor wears no clothes. Right. You yeah, cannot you cheat people right. and hide. Right. It used to be you could do oh, all yeah. kinds of, you know. Un- you heard of companies, that, you know, they, they would they would go out of business and then reopen under a new name. Right. You know, and the, and the same address. You right. can't do that anymore. Well, it's harder to do that. I would say on the Internet, there are companies that do that a lot. Uh, but generally, you can, if you want to find them, you can find them. Because we had one that come to us, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and they said, well, we get leads and everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I looked for them, and I found Somebody really similar, and then I noticed the address was the same, and they mm-hmm. had really bad ratings and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, so it's much harder to cheat and fool people today because of social media. Yeah, and that's a good it's thing. Really, it's a consumer-oriented yeah. world. Uh, so I think that's, that's a really big deal. And then, again, all these things, you don't need to be totally altruistic where you're like Jesus walking on water and right. handing out fish and you know bread. 
you have to be balanced. And again, once you have these underlying attributes, right. you can start to say, you know, I'm working 60 hours a week. Maybe I really need to be working 40 hours a week so right. I can spend time with my family. Yeah, well, and then, of course, then, then comes in the D word, delegate. Right. Because once you reach a certain level of success, now you've got enough wherewithal where you can start to delegate and then you can really start to grow your business because right. if you're just the only if you're the chief cook and bottle washer in your right. business you ain't going nowhere you basically have a job right it's not a business and then, again we're not saying that it's bad to have a job no. but if you want to grow to a successful business right your business has to reach a point where it can operate without you right and also where you bring in more people right so that you don't have to do as much of the tasks at hand you need to be able to make it so that you can go on a vacation for a yeah. month right you know, and again, that's where you want to be. I know we got about four minutes left in the show. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure we get to the worldwide wares. We've oh, yeah. got some really cool ones. Yeah, yeah. And well, this, coming this up week the topic day. is called "There Goes the Neighborhood." Okay. Okay. And the first one, well, it says, "Mysterious unidentified object cra crashes in Myanmar, which used to be Burma." Right. Okay. It says a large metal object fell from the sky November 10th in a remote mountainous region. He said the cylindrical object, which was 12 feet long and five feet in diameter, blasted into the village of Lone Kin near a jade mine. Vill villagers work, woke early in the morning to hear a loud boom and vibrations when the object fell to the ground. Though no one was injured, the UFO ripped through a jade miner's tent and afterwards <laughs> the smelling, smell of burning electronics filled the air. So apparently some piece of a rocket booster because yeah, it, I mean, it was sonic boom. You know, and this thing is some metallic cylindrical object. So, so. There, there's no photographs on it. No. Just well, they, they, you know, again, this is out in the boonies, but they, 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 first they were saying they thought it was a piece of, uh, uh, you know, like a, a jet engine or something like that. But I mean. And here's some entrepreneurs. These yeah. guys are out there digging jade and stuff. Right. Like, and, 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 and they had their and literally the east, had their wake up call. Most people don't realize in the East, yeah. jade is more valuable than gold. Yeah, but yeah. they think it was a piece of space junk, you know, yeah, because you got a lot of those boosters up there. And, and again, if it made a sonic boom, it was going past Mach 1. And on top of that, I mean, how many aliens do you know run around in a 12-foot-long Right, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Here, here's another one which was kind of surprising because I hadn't even heard about this. Apparently, there was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake in New Zealand. And, I mean, it tore up the town of Christchurch. But here was a picture that they had literally... It said it ripped apart a grass pasture, but three cows managed to survive on a small patch of grass. And you can see this little hunting green that they're all huddled on, and around them, it's all like the ground is. Right? And, and, and I'm thinking, where's the rest of the herd? I mean, they must have just gotten swallowed up by the earth. Yeah. You know, that's a heck of a wake-up call for the cows. I don't think they, I think they're going to be uh, making yogurt instead of milk with those puppies. <laughs> and here's what I like, because you know you, you're into the Boy Scouts, right? And, and you, I bet they don't have a merit badge for this. A radioactive Boy Scout dies at age of 39. And it says, yeah, it says, David Charles Hahn, who gained some notoriety in 1994 for attempting to build a homemade breeder reactor for a Boy Scout project in his mom's Michigan backyard shed, has died at the age of 39. From radioactivity. Well, they, don't, they didn't say what caused him to die, but I, I would take it might have been part of it, because apparently he, 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 he had talked his way to, into uh, past a couple of the NRC, you know, the guys who still regulating. How's he get yellow cake and all that kind you of know, stuff? Well, it wasn't yellow cake, but they, they did teach him some things that he shouldn't have known to the point where that the, the shed was so radioactive it turned into a national Superfund site for cleanup. Ah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to be doing that, kids. We don't need that uh, nuclear merit badge. I hope he was eating a lot of potassium. <laughs> Probably not enough. <laughs> Obviously not enough. <laughs> um, you know, we're coming to the end of the show. I want to make sure I remind our listeners to go to vibrantlifehealthcenter.com, check out their website, uh, go to, to Life in Balance on Blog Talk Radio. Yep. Their show's on Thursdays, I think at 4 o'clock. Um, great stuff, not a lot of commercials, really useful information. If you're into health and wellness and yep. you're tired of these doctors trying to give you painkillers and all this kind of yep. stuff, that's the place to really get a whole lot of information. Yeah. Uh, their blog is really just filled with useful information as well. Uh, speaking of blogs, uh, next week, uh, since it's coming up on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. it's going to be called Top 10 Online Turkeys. <laughs> and it, it's not going to be about the actual gobblers. Right. right? It's going to be about stuff that's on there. I want to remind the listeners to go to the notes page. There's a whole bunch of articles there on attributes of entrepreneurs. And what I tried to do is get a lot of different perspectives so if you got people on the left, people on the right, people in the middle, people in the jungle, you know, read all their stuff. You'll learn a whole bunch of things there. Uh, also, for the Club WQ members, go to the Dropbox. There you're going to find all this information as well and all the other goodies that are good for you. So that's all we have for this week, you know. Keep working the web to win, gang. Until next time, guys.
And those cows were shaking, not stirred. <laughs> <laughs>